Hello, it's Demetrius Law, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. We're doing a live live stream. I, uh, live live stream. Hey, that makes no sense. Anyways, at Sunday night, I haven't done these for a little while. I was trying to do Monday nights, but then Monday night football started up, and, well, I don't compete with those guys. But then I looked at the games for tonight, and Sunday night football is playing the Rams versus the Browns. That game's over at the coin toss, and uh, not really exciting. So I thought, what the hell? Let's do a live stream tonight because Monday is going to be Monday Night Football, not that juggernaut there. And I'm traveling this week. I was traveling last week, and I'm just just got a lot going on. Plus, I want a little bit of whiskey, so I thought, hell, let's do a live stream. So uh, tonight's uh, whiskey of choice is the tin cup. It comes with a little tin cup. I forgot it outside, and I'm not going back out there. But uh, it's a Colorado whiskey, I believe, is what I, yeah. This is Colorado. Nice script lettering. So... Little fired up, my uh, gearing golf course, Monument Shadows. We played the Scotts Bluff Country Club, those country club guys over the weekend, and we beat them 55 to 44 in a team competition. I got all three points today. My partner, well, he did not. So um, we sh split yesterday halvesies, and then today I won all three. So that was kind of fun. I like playing those fun little tournaments. Meet new people, have a good time, and um, win. So I'm going to State Fair of Texas next week. I'll be with Toyota on Tuesday. State Fair is... No. Flying Tuesday, Toyota Wednesday, State Fair Thursday, fly back Thursday night. Yeah, that's kind of how things are going. So, yes, I thought, let's talk about State Fair. Hmm. We know there's a Nissan Titan going to be there. 2020. Uh, speculation is huge that the Ford Super Duty could be there. Um, from my standpoint, it makes a lot of sense, but... Um, I don't know. We'll see. Ford's been doing their own events in Detroit, so they could do their own stuff uh, coming soon in Detroit would be something they could do. Um, maybe they do their own thing. Maybe they're State Fair of Texas. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Toyota's going to show me some stuff. I'm going to drive their products off-road. i got a ton of cool off-road videos coming for you guys. I've been kind of hesitant about putting out, like, well, BS videos. So i got some really cool content uh, coming as soon as I can, well, as soon as I get to it. All right, I'm just busy. Um, anyways, uh, I got Tacoma uh, with a manual transmission. That was fascinating of a drive. It was really, um, really interesting. Uh, uh, stick Tacoma. Never driven one of those before. I've been doing this for like eight years, never driven Stick Tacoma. Drove the Jeep Gladiator and drove it on-road and off-road, and there's some surprising results there. Uh, Ford Ranger. Yeah, Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger. It doesn't really disappoint, but it doesn't really excite. And the... Um, Colorado ZR2 Bison. So that's always a cool drive, and the Bison is a cool uh, truck. So Kyle's here, Mike's here, Benito is here. He likes Corona and lime, put the lime in the coconut. Hey, Mike. Um, I kind of, like I said, did impromptu. I'm not sure how many people are going to show up, but uh, I just haven't done these for a while. And I thought, well, damn it, I need to do one. I'm way behind. I've been doing them for a while, and just, well, hadn't got to it. So Clinton's here, Phil's here. So we know... So again, uh, State Fair of Texas is kind of what we're talking about. Now I can I'm going to change this up. Why is it so small on my screen? Hold on, let me work on this. Um, I'm going to. I guess it looks fine on that screen. Hmm. So I'm going to um, talk about State Fair of Texas. This will turn into a dialogue with the audience, and then um, it'll probably go for about I don't know four or five minutes, an hour, something like that, depending on how things get going, depending on uh, how is it tasting. So. Um, that's how these live streams work. If you've never seen this before, uh, if you only want to hear about State Fair Texas, probably the first five, ten minutes. So we know the Nissan Titan is going to be there. We're hoping for Super Duty. Uh, Jeep, uh, let me see. Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel is going to be there. Ford is going to, or Ram's going to announce some heavy duty colors, new colors for the heavy duty trucks, I believe. I think that's what they're going to do. Uh, Toyota will probably do some special editions. I'm not thinking anything new news new news worthy with for them uh honda won't do anything and leaves uh chevy and gmc uh not hearing a whole lot from those guys at all they probably do just a special texas edition of their trucks so that'll be state fair mm. david boyd is here jimmy marano is here jordan dewald is here clinton phil so that's what we're going to see i don't believe you'll see 2021 Toyota tundra won't be there it'll be chicago next year just, I just had a conversation today about a big Toyota fan on that. So that'll be something that's going to come. Uh, like I said, the, the 2020 Nissan Titan will be there. There's a video on this channel about that. That is, if I ever think about it, I'll link to that above. And um, 
Let me turn some more light. Yeah. Yeah. Get my good side. Hmm. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, State Fair is pretty big. What's interesting is that the uh, Nissan's flying people in. Toyota's flying people in. People are flying and staying because the show's hosting them. So uh, it's going to be a well-attended media show, <laughs> which is kind of surprising for a regional State Fair. But State Fair has turned into a truck show, so I badge some more stuff. People are saying Ram TRX. I just doubt it. Maybe. Maybe. But I just doubt it. I don't think that's going to be there. Um, I just think it's going to be uh, kind of lame, I think, overall. The, that's my um, anticipation. Uh, Silverado ZRX. That could be there. That'd be fun. Um, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> but it could be fun. Uh, I, I don't see a whole lot more from Chevy. They really unveil it quite a bit. And so it seems like they build up, unveil, they build up, unveil, build up, unveil. So um, maybe. I, I like being surprised. So hopefully they surprise me. All right. Uh, Guy Renica. One through five. We'll just call you one through five. One through five says, no, it's not new this year. Not It's not this year, but I really can't wait for a ton to refresh. The front face and everything is so old. Yeah, that's going to be next year. Next February. Chicago, Chicago Auto Show. Uh, Jordan throwing out the random <laughs> names of the trucks. All right, the Ram Heavy Duty. No, they already came out with those. Okay, wish the 2020 Ford Bronco would get released already. Yes. You and everybody. So that's the thing. It's like, so it's September. Ford is supposed to unveil the Ford Super Duty this year still. And they talked about showing a Bronco at the end of this year. So I wonder what they're waiting for. Um, I'm going to be there in October. We'll be, I'll be in Texas and in Salt Lake City. And I know there's something Nissan's doing to drive in November. Maybe Ford's doing something. I haven't heard anything. Maybe they are. I don't always get the invites to Ford stuff. That's okay. Since the Tundra is made in Texas, it would be awesome if they revealed the next-gen Tundra there. It would definitely steal the spotlight. Ah, Matthew makes a good point. It would steal the spotlight uh, big time if they unveiled it there. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Toyota's very systematic. So, I just don't see it. Uh, David says, updating Titan looks great. That front fascia, uh, the front grill, I should say. Um, that's interesting. I like the I like the LED lights, personally. But I don't, nothing more to that. Hmm. Maybe they will make some more changes. Uh, new design Tundra Tacoma for 2021. Yes. The Tundra will be 2021. The, 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 what I'm hearing from the plant is that they think that the Tacoma will be stretched a little bit to fit on the same frame. But it's going to still be a smaller truck. People were worried it would be the inverse, that the Tundra would get smaller to match the Tacoma. No, I think they make the Tacoma even bigger. Which to me says that there's a spot then to create a spot between Tundra, Tacoma, and then... Did I do that right? Or did I go over here? Yeah, so a new compact mid-sized truck. Compact truck. That makes sense. So I could see Tundra, Tacoma, and new compact. Like Ford is doing, and they're talking about, um, they're doing the new, what is that, Corvair? They had a car, make it a platform. They're talking about doing that small, smaller, smaller, smaller. Uh, David said, new 9-speed for I for Frontier and Pathfinder. <laughs> um, well, it's in the, the Titan's got a 7-speed, right, David? So where would they get the 9-speed from? Maybe. Hmm. Jordan, towing NASCAR. Cool. Uh, I confirmed this week. You confirmed this week a new night speed for Frontier and Pathfinder? Hmm. Interesting news from David at Nissan Nation Podcast. I, uh... I, it feels like in these smaller trucks and smaller uh, SUVs as well that there's a place of limited returns, meaning that as you add more and more gears... What are you really getting from all those gear sets? Are you getting the improved fuel economy? Or are you getting the improved off-line speed? What, what, what are you really getting? Because you just can't keep improving and adding more speeds. Because at some point, there's a limit on how much returns you get for your investment in additional speeds. It's like the, there's a 10-speed bicycle still. Like, you haven't really made anything more. I, I think mine's got like... 20 speeds by now but i don't really use half the speed so i don't i i think there's a, a point of limited returns with additional gearing in transmissions 
Hey, Brandon. Uh, Brandon is here from San Francisco. Hey, didn't the uh, 49ers go 3-0 or something? I was seeing that earlier. Um, somebody posted that. I really kept track of NFL. I was out playing golf yesterday and today. Winner. Um, and we won in our club kind of championship kind of stuff going on. So uh, not club, but the uh, competition we have with the country club. Very cool. Although it's blowing like 20 miles an hour today. Tough day playing golf. Total Tundra Heavy Duty is not happening. Not going to happen. Never will happen. Not happening. I agree. Ford and GM training is always searching for a gear. Yeah, it's it's one of those interesting things where, like, are you gear hunting or are you just adding more gears because you want to? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. My guy today is playing golf with. Kept talking about the. I'm going to look this up. Ford Raptor Baja. Have you guys heard of a Ford Raptor Baja? And he said there was a Baja Baja. Is it a Shelby? Shelby Baja Raptor. So it's a Shelby. 525. Huh. Okay, there it is. He kept talking about Baja Raptor, and I couldn't figure out what he's talking about. And it's like, oh, he's talking about the Shelby Baja Raptor. Ugh. This guy said there was also, the guy at the Ford store said there was a Baja Baja Raptor. I was like... What's wrong with the base Baja? Why do you got keep? Why does Shelby need another sixty thousand dollars to do their Baja? Seventy-five more horsepower, yeah, more capable Fox Racing shots, bunch of off-road ready exterior improvements. Ugh, they need more exterior perform improvements. Like, what is an exterior improvement on an off-road truck? Are we doing the big light bar? Oh, we did the. Oh, we have more LED lights, and we have light bar. It looks like a nineteen eighties like Fall Guy pickup. Yeah, interesting. So I looked it up. Um, 49 said Jim starts season. Is 49 season borrows from some sort of international Nissan? Yeah, David. What's going on? We need the numbers in a 7.3 tremor. Damn it. Come on, Ford. I I actually, John, I said that today while I was playing golf with my partner. He, was, uh, he has a Ford 1 ton that just beats the crap out of him driving home because he lives in a county road. And if you've driven a 1 ton on paved roads, it's tough enough unloaded and he he hauls stuff he has a, he's a construction guy he needs to have the trailer he needs to have the cape billy a lot of times he's driving home empty bed because he's done his work for the day and so i said you want the tremor that's what you're looking for the tremor it's got the off-road off-road package really upgraded off-road package and then it's like well come on ford should do that shouldn't the tr tremor was announced a couple months ago wasn't and the godzilla 7.3 was announced um but let's make it all official like, unveil it all and show it all, and maybe I'll see it in Texas. And let's uh, get to market. Um, what day will they be unveiling the trucks at Texas Fair? Matthew, it's going to be Thursday. Let me check my calendar. I want to say Thursday. I plan on doing some live streams. I don't know if you guys will be around Thursday, but I plan on... I kind of think it's going to handle I'm just going to do live stream for like 5-10 minutes each, each truck and go from there. It worked out okay when I did the Chevy Heavy Duty. It's too tough to shoot the whole thing and do a whole stand-up, and I'm lazy. So I thought, you know, I'll just do live streams. All right, so da 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 Thursday. Thursday 26. So if you are at your computer on Thursday 26, make sure you have it fired up. Make sure YouTube's open. Make sure you're on my page because I will do – when things get unveiled, I'm just going to take and throw my camera up uh, through my phone, basically. on my phone. That's my phone. That's the shape of it. And I'm going to throw that up and do live streams and just – I'm going to show you guys everything. Bam. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna throw up. To, I'm gonna do a little, little bit as far as a uh, thumbnail when I get back home. I'll change the thumbnail up, do the tags, and all kind of stuff I have to do these days. But I thought, let me just. I'm gonna throw that stuff up for the Tech State Fair, and whatever I see is new. I'm gonna grab my stuff and walk around, and do it, and uh, be done with it because I just, it's too hard. The, the 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 press conferences are bam, 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 and so I I actually I'm only staying till 1:30, so I'm gonna do lunch and then move on. So I'm gonna do a lot of live streams. That way I get the content to you guys as fast as possible. All right. Um, they just want a reason to hype the price up. Edgar the Meddler says, New Nissan EV SUV coming to and is amazing. Okay. Is that the small one? Was that the compact SUV? I thought you were talking about that. And uh, everything's amazing for Nissan Nation podcast. Um, I don't know. It's not so amazing. Uh, Brandon says, what truck are we going to reveal just to tighten? That's what we're speculating on, Brandon. We're doing the, uh, 
rub the goatee and uh, speculating here. We're talking about the, um, we know Titan. I hope the front Super Duty is going to be there. I know there's going to be some new colors for Ram Heavy Duty. I know Jeep Wrangler is going to get Eco Diesel. Uh, Toyota might might do something. It makes sense for them to do something in, in Texas, but uh, I don't know. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not hearing a whole lot there. The Colorado and Canyon are talked about being refreshed. I haven't done a video on that because there's not much refreshments there. Um, not much going on. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing much from Chevy. I don't know. I'm not seeing much from Chevy at all. I think there should be something there. Um, yeah. Hey, Juan. <laughs> Miss Rance. I, 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 we won our golf thing today, so I don't have a whole lot of rants, buddy. I'm in a really damn good mood. And I want some whiskey, and I wanted to uh, get a live stream out because I haven't done one for a while, so I thought, let me do one tonight. Again, I wasn't competing with Monday Night Football, but I'll compete with Sunday Night Football because the game tonight sucks. Um, any more news about new generation, next generation Tundra? Nothing. February so far is what I'm hearing. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much set now, with the guys, in my world of thinking that there'll be a small displacement, twin turbocharged engine like the EcoBoost. They will be a V8. That's ridiculous. They won't get rid of V8. There'll be those two engine choices. Uh, there'll probably be one single rear wheel axle. Maybe they'll have two axle combinations. Maybe there'll be a double cab and crew cab. And there's going to be probably a new, I think, a new cab configuration and a new styling all the way around. And they'll have inside will be a bigger screen all the Toyota safety technology and you have apple carplay android auto would be my guess inside the cabin and uh the, i think i'm really kind of thinking about the five link coil suspension i'm gonna borrow from ram and I put that in a tundra that's that's all my guesses i'll put in one but that's just things i've seen the things i've been looking at and things that people have been speculating on the rear suspension looks like it's gonna be different and i think that five link coil suspension makes a lot of sense because what happens is if you, if they can take that frame, redo that frame, and make it more high strength steel inside the frame, they can make this frame more rigid. And when they do that, they can just alter the wheel articulation and the vibration at the wheel, and they really settles narrows down engineering wise. Instead of doing complications about if the frame flexes, the wheel's got to flex things like that. They can just do it as a one piece. If this this frame stays solid, this is constant. You can just adjust for the wheel. And so I think what they'll do is they'll get that kind of figured out. Then they'll do a five-link coil suspension. That's going to allow them to get better ride quality because if, if you've ever had a Tundra or if you've talked to Tundra guys, uh, the, the two biggest complaints in a Tundra is fuel economy and ride quality. And I think that Mike's really going to attack ride quality and fuel, fuel economy with it. So the fuel economy to me is going to be with the EcoBoost wannabe engine and the ride quality is going to be with the Ram ride quality. I think those two will go together. <sighs> That's what I think. That's what I think. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, yeah. And the Titan, the Titan is going to be a uh, new front grill, a uh, new bigger screen inside, uh, maybe some uh, a sunroof. Uh, David Boyd talked about talked about that. A sunroof, and it's going to be some. Um, probably, I don't think I don't think there's many packaging differences, and I just don't see a lot from Nissan right now on the changes. I think they're, I think. If I were to speak off the cuff, I would think that the Nissan is fairly happy with their truck. I think they think that marketing is a big problem for them and uh, awareness. I think they feel like their truck is very competitive. And I did think that that market awareness is their biggest problem from what my understanding is from talking to their engineering staff. It, I think that's what the, where they're at right now. And uh, which I take it as you will. I just think that, that is what they're talking about uh hey yeah david says nice and uh troy you think next gen tacoma engine will get more horsepower and torque or supercharger um no supercharger but i think there will be some changes next gen tacoma engine i my, my sense is this my sense is this if if toyota goes turbocharged engine choice for the tundra I believe they'll start doing that more for the Tacoma and the 4Runner. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Chief Engineer Mike Spears is not a fan of turbocharged engines because he tows a lot. But if you give them the V8 they can tow with and give them the small displacement engine for those guys who don't tow very much, I think you'll be happy. The Tacoma, it fits that realm really well. Average towing in like the, the mid-sized truck segment is like 2,000 pounds. And so a small displacement turbocharged engine does that well. It can handle that weight, and it's more fun to drive, and it's more fuel efficient. Turbo is notorious for breaking down long term. 
but I think Toyota is so late to the game doing this. I think they'll build it and they'll build turbos at a higher rate of durability than their competitors because they, if Toyota does one thing well, they build things great. They're always late to the market, but they do it well. So I think you're going to see that. And I think what you'll see is you'll see the competitors like Ford and Ram and, and, and Chevy as well on e keep breaking the mold on new innovations. So, you know, it's one of those things. If you're a Tundra fan, you're basically focused a lot on reliability. That's really where the Toyota's at. But if you're other, other fans, I mean, how do you not get behind the Ram interior? <laughs> Damn thing looks amazing. Uh, the Chevy inline six th three liter diesel. That's an amazing engine. I was so blown away by that. So they're, they're, the competitors are really good right now. And I think Toyota is going to keep being a fifth largest truck maker. It seems like these podcasts, or these podcasts, these uh, uh, live streams do a lot with the uh, Toyota. But, I mean, the reality is, is that Chevy, Ford, and Ram kicked their ass. But, whoops. Um, so, I, I think that the, we should talk more about them as well in, in, the, in how it all works out. But I, I think Toyota's going to be late to the market and stuff, but they'll be the best job. So, I think you're going to see that for the uh, Tacoma. Uh, Toyota does use turbocharged engines. Yeah, they do. Toyota, uh, Toyota turbocharged, charged engines. They do. They use uh, turbocharged engines. Uh, it doesn't Lexus have one? Rolls out first over to Edison. Like, Wards talks about it. I think Lexus has them. There. Brandon. I think Brandon. I think Lexus has them. All right. So. Oh, sorry. I missed your question, Brandon. But hold on. Sorry. I'm going to go back to this. It's a. Yeah, Lexus NX 200T, and I think you'll find that they're going to do more and more. They'll do some hybrids, but do some turbocharged engine as well. So that, that's what we're talking about. They're talking about that Lexus. Um, that's a four-cylinder, I believe. But they've made their they've made it known that they want to do more turbocharged engines. I'm gonna kill that. All right. So, uh, what do you think of the Frontiers outselling the range last quarter? Can't be what Ford wanted. I'm still not convinced Ford wants to sell the Ranger. Not convinced. Although there was a photo the other day that they were talking to customers about what to do, what to fix in the Ranger. I just think they're just really tepid in the marketplace. I think I don't think there's much going on. G Gladiator Diesel, yeah, G Gladiator Diesel is definitely coming. That's like a no-brainer. But have you guys heard about Hercules? I just got a notice uh, from a spy photographer. He saw a Jeep Gladiator. He's calling the Hercules. It's got a different hood. They're talking about a um, Hellcat powered Jeep Gladiator, basically, is what they're looking at. I just don't see where Toyota is going to get a twin turbo. Uh, 3.5 liter for the new Frontier, possibly. Yeah, I think, that four, I think the 4 liter V6 is too big anymore. I think you'll start seeing more 3.5 uh, direct injected engines. Same thing with the Toyota 4Runner. I think the engine's going away. You see Toyota doing some sort of mild hybrid system in the Tundra, kind of like the Ram did. I would, I could see that as well. Um, but I, the sources tell me that there is no electrification in that drivetrain so far. It's got to be a twin turbo. We're never going to see the Titan more, nor Tundra. Their myth right now. <laughs> it could be Junior. Uh, twenty twenty Titan, twenty horsepower, Infinity time tune. Hmm, could be interesting. That'd be interesting. That'd be interesting that they. I just find Nissan's viewpoint right now so interesting. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I can't wait to see how the Titan turns out. I personally think their money should be spent more on the Frontier, but I just I would think that they would do more of that. Tacoma needs a real truck engine that type in the Sienna engine shows. Have you seen the new Frontier? I have seen a new Frontier. Hmm. What's funny is I did that video like with the Photoshop messing around with the, the Frontier and the Titan. And people are like commenting on that video right now. They're like, hey, you know, it looks pretty similar to what you guys had kind of done in Photoshop. And I'm like, really? I was just screwing around. 
Uh, Ram is the king of the big trucks right now. Yep. Which deck in 2020 truck of the year? I'm thinking we put one. Ram 1500. Well, uh, so what are you, what competition are you talking about, Brandon? Nactoy? North American Car Truck of the Year? Truck Trend? Uh, Motor Trend? What you're thinking about there? Because those competitions have caveats. And the caveats are you have to be significantly improved before prior generation or you're not allowed to compete, which is kind of a crap thing to do. But so like if Ram 1500 hasn't had many improvements, it can't win truck of the year from truck trend. I think motor trend, I think Nacto as well. They eliminate those. And so you can't win that thing. You can't win those awards. That's how they work. Ram just feels cheap in the interior. It's really interesting. You'll see in the video when I have all these, I have all these videos shot. I just need to get them out. But uh, we compared the Ranger to the Tacoma interior, and I think we had some really interesting thoughts. When is the 2020 Ram Power Wagon coming out? PJ asks. So it should be out now. Yeah, it should be out now. I can't think of why it wouldn't be out. Yeah, priority dealers. Juan, you missed taco time. No, <laughs> you didn't miss anything. We're just chatting. You can rewind it. Where are the Super Duty horsepower and torque numbers? Good question, Juan. No idea. I agree. Nissan should focus on the Frontier. That's where the sales are at right now. Yeah, I don't I understand why the Frontier hasn't like taken center focus. They're just really involved in the Titan, which is fine. I, I, I'm I going to be very interested to watch the press conference on Thursday to see how they're going to spin the Titan numbers. That's what I'm going to be interested about. Phil asks, does the new Frontier have an updated interior? Someone post a picture of it, please. I'm looking to buy a midsize pickup right now, and I'm leaning towards Ford Ranger XLT. Phil, there is no new Nissan Frontier. Nobody's seen it. It's not out yet. They haven't unveiled it. Looking at probably November LA Auto Show, maybe, or maybe on their own. It's gonna. It's interesting. There, there's just not, nobody, there's no new one out. It's only the old one. Tim, did you really screw around with the designer, or did you go to Nissan Underground Lair and see the new one? <laughs> no, I just I just screwed around. I just messed around on Photoshop. It was crazy. Next summer's going to be huge for Nissan Frontier and Pathfinder. I hope so. I hope so, David. I really do hope so. Nissan needs big win. Oh. Yeah, I don't really. I'm sorry, guys. Not you. I'm just... Played a lot of golf, had a lot of fun, and drank a lot. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I really hope so. I think Nissan needs a big win right now, and I really think that they would uh, they could do well to make that win. The Pathfinder is an interesting conversation we've been having. On the one hand, sales are good on the new Pathfinder, and it's doing better than the prior Pathfinder in sales. On the other hand... I think Toyota's missing something by not, or not Toyota, Nissan's missing something by not having a body on frame SUV. A mid sized body on frame SUV that's off road capable. I think they're missing something. Uh, Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Ram 15 is more than enough upgrades for repeat win. Eco Diesel, Tailgate, and Huge Safety Improvements. It just depends what Motor Trend says. It depends how they figure out their, their testing and whether or not the Ram qualifies. Yes, yes, Wendy. Uh, the Ford and 15 is one truck of the year many times too, yeah. 2020 Eco Diesel EPA. Mm, new Love Sport Fishing. Uh, Eco, EPA numbers are not out yet. So it seems likely they'd be out ASAP. They're probably working on getting them finalized. I, I still believe in the four wheel drive configuration, you were looking at late 20s in highway fuel economy. And a two wheel drive, you're probably early 30s in highway. Um, city is probably going to be 25 four wheel drive and like 27 city. That'd be my guess. And so combined, uh, four wheel drive combined, what I say? 25, 28. So maybe somewhere in that range, 26, 27 combined and two wheel drive will probably be uh, one or two mile per gallon better just cause, uh, drop the weight in the uh, transfer case. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You'll see with that, but I haven't heard anything. No, nothing's been announced. It, it may, they could do the announcement in, in Texas. That could be something interesting. They could make the announcement Eco Diesel EPA in Texas. That'd be they could. Hey Elliot, um, Brady Ford Ranger, Ranger, yeah. Frontier needs to be fat, Frontier based again. I don't know if it needs to. Yes, bring back the exterior wire. I think the exterior needs to come back. Pathfinder stays the same. 
Uh, Frontier is getting small refresh, like push button start, radio, IP cluster, nothing major until 2021 model year comes next year. Hmm. I've heard the new Frontier is done. They keep telling me that it's done. The exterior was nice. New night is going to be a disappointment. I, I agree. I, I, I think it's a refresh, which is what they need to do. But I just don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to be wow. I don't think, I, I just don't feel... I don't know why. I just don't feel a big wow factor from the new Nissan Titan. I just feel like that's coming. Maybe it will. Maybe I like to be shocked. I'd love to be shocked. I just don't feel it. I just don't feel like there's a lot of energy. There's so much going on with Nissan and their uh, management and their leadership. And I think the PR team over there is fantastic. But I just... I have so many concerns. It just doesn't seem like a big one. When can we order one? Is the new Ram EcoDiesel not available yet? I mean, I drove it last month, was it? In August? And so it makes sense. Uh, for the all new Ram EcoDiesel. Yeah. And, um... Okay. It's your PA. All right, I'm going to try to order this. I'm going to try to click on the screen. I'll answer more questions. I would think you'd order it now. I don't understand what the weight is. That's my thing. Have you heard anything... Doug asks, have you heard anything new about the lawsuit against Ford for supposedly screwing around with the Ranger mile per gallon figures? No. Everything new. That's going to be... Um, federal government's involved, so that means everything's going to go slow. They have investigators in the scene. So, no, it'll be a big news when it hits. Try to peek on Lodge Barbecue. I wish I could try different restaurants. I'm always, I'm on Toyota's trip. All the meals are planned. I mean, it's, I don't have time to do anything. Nissan should have just scrapped the XD. My local deal says brand new 2018 a lot. Oh, wow. Um, have an awesome night. Later, David. So, I, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I wonder why the XD gas still exists. That's my only question. I wonder why the XD gas exists. Build Ram 29. Hmm. Those are 19s, not 20s. So I don't know. I It seems like that'd be something they could do. I, I was told soon. I drove it in August, and they're going to start doing it soon. Yeah, I think that's one of my concerns too. Is it's Nissan's been losing money? Uh, they have these commas just pulled out. There's just a lot of negative energy around Nissan right now, and so where are they going to get the money from? They're going another CEO. I just, I have a lot of concerns with Nissan, and I just wish that, I just, I can't wait for the press conference. I can't wait to hear from Nissan. You know what is going on? What is the deal over there? And are they going to? Are they moving forward? Are they just... I don't know what's going on. I just... I wish I knew. I'm still trying to build this darn truck. I want the... Uh, Tradesman HFE High Efficiency Vehicle. So... Bighorn. Quad cab. I'm really surprised by this. I thought you could order that. Nope. No diesel. What is this? Oh, wait. What is it? Uh, Hemi. And. Oh, Hemi. Oh, e Torque Hemi or not e Torque Hemi. Yeah. Sorry, man. I thought you could order that. So, I don't know. I have good, don't have a good answer for you. Um, what else is going on, folks? Looking at the list here. I think I answered this question. Oh, wow, it just totally refreshed. Uh, is GM doing, doing anything with the 2.8 liter Duramax? Doubtful. Gets worse mile per gallon than the 3 liter into diesel at Silverado now. It's not the engine, Brandon. It is the truck. And I think that that, because Colorado is older, it weighs more because they use the older steels. I think when they go through that truck again in the year, what was it 2023, something like that? It's a long ways off. Long ways off. When they go through that truck again, they can put some high strain steel on it and they can drop the weight. The problem is it's going to be the price point and keeping it below price point, people are going to want to buy it because high strain steel is more expensive than the standard 
cold stamped steel. And so there are going to be some problems there as far as meeting the price point. So that's going to be interesting. I, I just feel like there's lack of energy around the Colorado and Canyon right now from GM. And they are focused elsewhere. Also, where is the build and price for the 2020 Super Duties? The Shelby GT500 already has their build and price. I, I haven't really seen the Ford Super Duties out, though. They haven't made an announcement that are out. We've seen the Tremor package. We've seen the 7.3 liter V8 Godzilla get unveiled. But they're just piecemealing it. We haven't seen the official 2020 Ford Super Duty get unveiled. Well, Nissan has an all-new road coming. Nissan's got a lot of stuff. They're going to like flip over like most of their lineup coming soon. Uh, 228 Cummins Frontier should have been built instead of the 5-liter Cummins XD. Agreed. And Nissan Warrior. That damn Warrior looked amazing. Why can't they build that? Ram is another... Or Rogue is another boring 4-cylinder. Yeah. Boring, boring. Uh, Tim, did you hear Jeep is testing a Grand Cherokee might be with a Demon Engine? Yes, I have. I've heard that, actually. My high school friend is now in charge of the Jeep Grand Cherokee... Um, man truck or vehicle suv and so um been needling her a little bit she won't you know i haven't really needled her i, I haven't really it's unprofessional i do know her she's a high school friend and i will not ask her any future product questions i would not put her on a spot but i think that the new jeep grand cherokee could be really exciting and uh i you know, that's what fca is doing though everything's getting hellcat everything's getting demon everything's getting all sorts of stuff because that's what fca does what the hell let the horses run they sure as hell ain't building electric cars. So the car amazed more than the silver out now. Are you putting my words together, Brandon? Let's see. He's putting my words together. 2019 Chevy Colorado curb weight. 2019 Chevy Silverado curb weight. Mm-hmm. Survey says. I said it would get lighter. I would say they drop the weight and get lighter. Okay, so I have the, the low end curb weight is 4,257 pounds. The low end Chevy Colorado is 3,935 pounds. The difference is 270 pounds on the low end. That's not very much. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be the difference in fuel economy. You got to get that Colorado weigh a lot less. It, it, it's a physics thing, guys. If something weighs less, it gets goes longer distances and less fuel. See how that works? Uh, I like the Chevy Silverado or Chevy ZR2 in orange. Did you make the ZR, Chevy ZR2 in orange? I haven't seen this yet. Chevy, Colorado. You guys are so up on this stuff. I try to be up on this in orange. Is it really? Oh, it is. Oh, you know what? I have seen that. I get so used to seeing the green and the silver, the white, and the red. The orange is interesting. It's like, go Broncos! All right. Um, we suck right now. Da -da 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 -da. America equals Hellcats and Demons and Cobras. <laughs> it does. Uh, when do you think they'll reveal a 2021 F-150? Bryant asks... I think Ford's going to do their own reveal on that, and I'm going to say first quarter next year. I think they're going to do it in uh, Ford Field in Michigan because they're going to keep their same product cadence. And being that the January auto show in Detroit is now moved to June, I could see Ford doing it in January in Detroit on their own, which would make it a toss-up if I get invited or not. Where is the new Escape build configuration? not there for at all for some reason. I don't know. A lot of my friends drove the new Escape, and they're like, it's better. Um, apparently, a new Grand Cherokee would be bigger and be based off a new Fiat platform. Fiat is so interesting. They, like, canceled everything except for the 500X and the um, Spider. And so it'll be interesting to see how long longer, like, this Fiat grow and expand do they bring over their fiat turo pickup over here or are they going to keep as a brand just those couple things and go keep being this weird like italian brand in the united states my third row as well i think it's gonna be the grand wagoneer will have third row rivian has about 800 bar that's something interesting huh. rivian 
I, I, you know, a, a friend of mine uh, made a very interesting comment about Rivian. He says, you know, I've never seen such excitement over a product that has yet to be delivered. It hasn't been delivered yet. Rivian has not built a single vehicle for consumer marketplace or for commercial marketplace. They haven't built anything. And they're getting tons of cash. So why is there so much excitement over this thing that, you know... I think what's interesting with Amazon doing 100,000 units they we're going to do is that's just the last mile. The last mile delivery is easy for EVs. If you're going to be in a town and you're going to do just 20 mile range around town and charge at lunch, that's a great EV product. And again, I think EVs work well in certain configurations, certain places. As a mass mode of consumers, I have my concerns. Lots of concerns with GM. They're really slipping in the distance third place in sales. The cheap on stuff around Sierra redesign that shows. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how GM responds. I will tell you this. If there's one company that's really fired up right now, it's GM. Those truck guys are really passionate and they're really fired up. And I could see them coming back strong. I can see them coming back very strong. Uh, they know they have some issues. But I, I would tell people this, is that when you look at GM... Um, I think mechanically they've done a great job. That three liter inline six diesel is amazing. I think mechanically the brakes are great, transmission's great. Uh, the five point three liter V eight is fine. There's no problems there at all. I think even their two point seven liter turbocharged four cylinder engine for the Silverado is is fine. It's nothing wrong with that at all. It's it's actually pretty surprising how well it rides. I think ride quality is fine. I think packaging is fine. I think Trail Boss is a big hit. I think that the areas are designed and. I was talking to the interior designer about this, and he said, you know, he goes, if you think about mechanical and packaging and powertrain, that all stuff takes a long time. You're talking about design. We can make changes really fast. And I think you'll find that Colorado, or the Chevy will come, Chevy and GM will come, GMC will come out swinging really fast. And they're going to swing out pretty hard because I think they can make some, I really think that Sierra, it's just some tweaks inside. I like the exterior of Sierra. The exterior of Sierra works for me. Silverado, the grill could be adjusted a little bit and the interior redone and man they'd be have a solid truck right there and i think that that uh chevy and gmc have more production capacity than ram has so as much as ram is blowing things away right now i think that chevy and gmc just have more overall production capacity and they could easily catch right back at the ford so i would not discount those guys at all i'm wondering why they don't get rid of the 2.8 liter duramax and throw the three liter into colorado uh, it's length issue. So when they built the Silverado, uh, they went inline six and they built that engine specifically for that truck because you do inline six, it's longer and you have to have a longer front hood uh, area for it. 2.8 is a V6 or yeah, I believe it's a V6. And so it's a shorter engine. So it fits in the engine bay better. So it's the same reason why Ram with V6 because that three liter V6 is used in some Maserati vehicles. It's used in some, um, other European vehicles, and it's used in that Ram. And so when you, you can use it, you, V6 you can use throughout different vehicles. Inline 6 is an inherently balanced better engine, but you can't use it across all these different vehicles in your lineup because of the length of that inline 6. And it says, I don't know, Brandon, I've seen a lot of them in Southeast Michigan of late. I agree. I've seen a lot of GMC Sierras lately. Sierras and Silverados. I'm seeing a lot of them lately. They like they made a comeback, and so I'll be, I'm just really curious to see those numbers. October first, and what is it? Two weeks. Uh, my watch is charging, but in a couple weeks, it will be. That's when the quarter ends, right? So third quarter, 2019. I want to say October, uh, da, 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 da. July one through September thirtieth is third quarter. So we will get some sales results and third, and that's gonna be on a Tuesday. Nothing else going on. You damn right I'm gonna have those sales results for you in a video as soon as I could possibly type them up because I'm excited. That'll be the third quarter results. We'll have Chevy, we'll have GMC, we'll have Ford, we'll have Ram as well, always does their monthly. But I'm gonna put those all into quarterly versus quarterly sales results. And that'll be interesting because it's no matter what I say on this on this live stream, what I say on my channel, it doesn't matter. It's what you say, the consumer. And so I can't wait to see what you're spending your dollars on to see what you guys are really liking in the marketplace. So I can't wait. I love third quarter sales. I love sales numbers anyways. It really shows a lot of what's going on. So yes, two weeks we'll have sales results. Uh, rumors are coming against the Stelvio platform. 
it's going to be on a platform. Somebody else is going to share the platform. You know, the reality is these days, the platform sharing saves money, cuts down engineering time, cuts down R&D time, and just makes for a better, uh, faster to product to marketplace product and better reliability. If you're saying using the same parts throughout, if you can improve those parts and use them throughout, you're going to have a better reliability overall. Um, the Grand Cherokee. New RAM is really nice. If you sweated the details, still prefer the engine options for GM. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Hey, do you think we'll see the Rabel TRX in Texas? <sighs> no. I don't know why. I think we should. I don't know why. Is it true that GM vehicles will get a major makeover of the interiors by 2021? Their trucks, of course. Yes, Bryant, that is true. Uh, GM engineers have, uh, designers have said it. They've been vocal. They're going to be take top notch interiors. What their focus is on, and um, I don't know. It it's going to be tough when you go from a mediocre interior to a well world class. I was going to say world class. So mediocre to world class. That's a quite a bit of a jump. And uh, boy, I'd be impressed if they can pull that off. And nothing against the designers. The designers are great designers, but you're asking a designer who was good with the mediocre interior. To do like three steps up to the world class interior, that's a lot. It'd be like asking me to improve my videos uh, to be TV grade, right? I'm a little YouTube videos going to a TV station grade. That's a big jump, and I'm not. Sh I don't have the capability to do that. So, I, God bless those engineers and designers. They have a chance to do that, and they can make that happen because that's a lot. I it's more than I can do. Um, the comments to great engine. I don't buy the 2.7 liter Silverado though. Mopgon is really no better than 5.3. I I don't know why people would buy it. And five the it's not be just mile per gallon. When you're doing a 5.3, the Crew Cab V8 is still the most popular truck configuration in the country, and so resale value is better on the 5.3 V8 than it is on the 2.7 liter. So there you go. Uh, well, new Tahoe Yukon Escalade will be all new, and according to spy photos, the touchscreens are huge. I can't wait. I was talking to a rep last week with Chevy and I, and I was joking with her I said you know I'm probably the only journalist in the country that wasn't emailing you about the mid-engine Corvette reveal and trying to get an invite and uh, she kind of sm smiled and I said I want to go on a Tahoe drive and she just chuckled and she's like yeah she goes you're literally the only person in the country that didn't like email us about the the uh, mid-engine Corvette and you want to go on a Tahoe drive I'm like oh yeah I want to go Tahoe drive Tahoe, Yukon Drive, SLA Drive, sign me up all day. I don't like to fit in a mid-engine Corvette. I can't fit the damn things. Uh, 2.8 is inline four. Thank you, Brandon. I knew you'd adjust that. So there you go. Inline four, right? So inline four, inline six, extra length. So my point still stands, even though it's inline four. Um, new Ford M50 is coming with a huge screen. It should. Those big screens are big deals these days and lots of profit Extra thousand bucks in your account because you put a big screen in. Hell yeah, Ford's like, sign us up. Uh, Ford's in here third place at this point. I don't know. I think it's Ram, Ford, and Chevy, maybe. I just don't like the Chevy interiors. And the GMC Denali, come on, guys. It's a Denali. Make it lustworthy. Uh, I love sales numbers. I agree. Uh, Tim's videos are Ram. Interior quality competing budget channels are producing Tundra interior quality videos. <laughs> wow, that whiskey's good tonight. <laughs> I'm doing the new iPhone Pro Max thingy when I get to that point. I will be doing that. I'm going to upgrade my... Here's a problem. I was a writer for so many years that I didn't invest in my video qual video stuff. And so my computer and my um, uh, computer, my, what is it, uh, my GoPro, my phone, all the video I do, it's just old. Just old tech. And so I really got to upgrade all my stuff if I'm going to keep doing videos, which I should because I like doing videos. It's fun. It's easy. So, yeah. Oh, somebody's here. I'm going to go help out. I'm going to cut this short, guys. I will see you next week. I will be at the State Fair of Texas. Do some videos. Keep the live stream. Check it out. Uh, PickupTruckTalk.com. Uh, PickupTruckTalk, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Find us, Tim at PickupTruckTalk, for comments, concerns, questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you.
down the road.